want to start just today talking about what's happening with Zillow, which has nothing to do with social media, but it does in many ways. If you haven't seen this article yet, it's all over the place. Uh, Zillow pursues brokerage licenses that it swears it doesn't want. It's pursuing brokerage licenses in all 50 states. As you probably know, uh, Zillow is by far the number one website, and Zillow no longer sends listings to the listing agents. If, you, if you've been in the business a while, what used to happen three, four, five years ago is that someone would log on to Realtor.com or Century21.com or, or some major site, and the uh, person would click on your photo or they'd click on your listing and ask for information, and that lead would go back to you. Unfortunately, that uh, changed and turned on its head with Zillow. Zillow is a company that is a marketing company, and so they sell the information to the person who pays the highest for that information. So, for example, uh, if someone comes on to uh, Zillow as an example and uh, sees my face on Zillow, it shows a phone number, 610-400-something else. That is not my phone number. If someone calls that uh, 600, 400 phone number, what they actually get is a Zillow representative who then turns around and sells that lead to whoever the highest bidder in that particular location is. It's become a real problem because Zillow has now bought a lot of the top 10 uh, real estate websites. They own Trulia, they own homes.com, I think they own realestate.com. So when you look at the top 10, Realtor.com is now referring business rather than uh, selling or referring business rather than giving to us. Um, Zillow is, of course, selling business to the highest bidder. And it's become more challenging because so many clients go to these sources first to look for houses. Now, the bright side is this. This is where I'm coming back around to social media. In the past, up until three or four years ago, almost two-thirds of business being done in the United States was done by people who already liked and trusted you. So your friends, your relatives, your coworkers, your former coworkers, uh, people you went to college with, your doctor, your dentist, your lawyer, uh, anybody you see on a regular basis, and referrals from those groups. The reason we talk about real estate taking three years to get going, and we've had realtors, by the way, make hundreds of thousands of dollars in their first uh, year or two, and that's happened in the last two years. However, uh, a lot of that business is, is going out and, and hitting the pavement, trying to bring it in. The um, typical realtor in the past, about two-thirds of their business came from friends, family, relatives, coworkers, and referrals from those groups. And over time, as you sell properties, those people you sell properties to and for refer you more and more and more business, and it builds like a wave, and that's where the business comes from. So with Zillow... Uh, pursuing brokerage licenses, there's always that chance they say they're not going to do it. But since they're already controlling so many of the leads and charging people $70, $80, $100 a lead for those leads, it's possible they're going to take those, open their own real estate brand, and uh, try and build that brand uh, remotely or virtually. They even have some uh, very interesting articles up on how virtual real estate is going to work where you won't actually have an office to work out of. So saying that, I want to come back around to why it's important to look at social media and how to build business with social media. And I'm going to give you some tips and techniques. We're not going to go heavily into advertising today. Normally when I'm talking about social media, we talk about paid ads, how to, for a couple of dollars, pay for an ad. We can talk a little bit about that today, but I want to talk about how to build your presence online and how to really start uh, connecting with those people already like and trust you and build a brand and build a following. So one of the things that we suggest, and I'm going to give you a lot of ideas and some of them will be a little rapid fire, is make sure when you're on social media to remind people that you're in the real estate industry. Uh, many of you are on Facebook. Uh, younger people tend to be on Instagram. Some of the top realtors in the nation are building large brands on Instagram, so it's something you may want to consider doing. If you're going after commercial real estate, you want to be in LinkedIn as much as possible. But let's focus on Facebook and Instagram for a couple of minutes. One of the things that you can do, and we do this uh, regularly, we create, using the green screen in our offices, uh, we create these ads that are uh, done primarily for uh, times of the year like Labor Day and uh, Fourth of July and uh, off holidays that you can post and make sure that they go out to all your friends and family. 
Uh, these happen to be two of them that were done for Khalif. We're constantly trying to do that. That's why we need a good photo of every agent so that we can actually cut them out. That's the benefit of a green screen and plug them in. Otherwise, we're putting the square in with the picture on it. But try and share these when you can because you're reminding people that you're in real estate. Now, a lot of uh, agents uh, have come to me and said, well, we're not allowed to do that now because you're supposed to have a business page. And if you've got a business page, all your stuff's supposed to be there. Technically, that's true. But the problem is nobody's going to see your business page. Uh, Facebook controls who sees it. Facebook limits who sees it. They try and get you to pay for boosting those posts so that more people in your particular general area can see that post. And of course, you want it to be shown everywhere you possibly can. So the important thing is making sure that it's out there. And if you post it on your regular page, unless someone complains, which is very rare, you're not going to go into Facebook jail. And you'll be able to at least uh, remind people that are in your sphere of influence that you're the person to go to. See, part of the problem in any industry is that you uh, people tend to remind, remember you in the way in which they met you. So <clears throat> when I was in high school, for those of you who don't know, I put a uh, car on the roof of Liberty High School and uh, on the lab center, second floor roof. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, my family and friends, when I got into real estate, would not ever entrust their most valuable asset to me because they remember me as the person who put the car on the roof of Liberty High School. So when I got into engineering and started doing computer uh, programming and, and so forth, they would see me as a computer programmer. It was a hard transition for them to see me selling real estate because that wasn't what they remembered me as. And by the way, you probably have cousins and second cousins and people you used to work with and people you went to high school with that you're friends with on Facebook that you're communicating with on a periodic basis, but you frankly don't really know what job they do or where they're working these days. So this is a way to remind them that you're at least in that industry and that you're bringing business in from that industry. Second thing I want you to do is pretty regularly, and we're going to explain why, but pretty regularly post uh, images or post listings from central21.com. Now, do not ever, ever post anything from Zillow. Why? Because if you post something from Zillow, it's going to lead them back to Zillow, and, that, uh, and Zillow is going to resell that information to someone else. So if you go to c21kime.com, which by the way is also Zap Home Search, that's the, what we've been branding it as to try and uh, keep people remembering it, zaphomesearch.com, that pulls up this web page. Now I'd already logged in, so it has my picture at the top. What you can do though is scroll down to the company. Now, this is if you don't already have your uh, page set up. Jane Wachter as, a, as an example is janewachter.com. If I click on her, you're going to see Jane show up at the top and you're going to see a, a branded search to her and all of her information. If you don't have a, a name set up for your website yet, we've created one for every agent. Then scroll down to you see the offices, click on the office, let's click on Bethlehem, and scroll down to, uh, let's say, Kathy Novak. And it'll change the agent to Kathy Novak. Now, the reason I'm doing this is everything that I now share on social media is going to be branded to Kathy. So let's say, for example, I want to do a search, and I want to search, um, well, let's say Nazareth, Pennsylvania or Nazareth Area School District. And I want something that's a decent listing. Prefer one of our listings if we can. Because if we're sharing someone else's listing, we have to actually notify uh, the person that we're sharing it. But let's say we pull up a listing and we find a pretty good one. Uh, let's, I'm gonna change this to view list, it makes it a little bit easier. I'll pull up a nice listing, Ashwood for 512,000. Right here's a little F for Facebook. Now, if I click on the F, it's going to share it. And for some reason on my computer, it's not working now. There we go. It's going to share it on my Facebook page. I can write something about it. And if someone clicks on this listing, it's going to come back, in this case, to Kathy's page to this listing. So if anybody is interested in it and fills this out, it's going to send that lead directly to Kathy through Lead Router. So again, very important if you are sharing listings, try and share it from your own page, your own site, 
rather than anybody else's. Make sure you're up at the top here. And again, the way you do that, uh, if you don't have a direct link like Jane or Sal or any of the others, is you're going to scroll down so you see the, uh, the offices, click on the office, find yourself, and that is going to uh, change over. So if I go to Bill Regal, it's gonna change the agent up here to Bill Regal. Hope that makes sense. That's a, one social media strategy. The other thing you wanna make sure you do is post on a regular basis. Uh, and I'm, I wanna talk about both posting real estate related, non-real estate related, but every time you list a property, you have a lot of opportunities to remind them that you're in real estate. And by the way, you can certainly show them that you're very busy and active, even if it doesn't appear to you that you're as active. When you list a property, there are a number of times you can post a listing. You might have listed a property this morning, and you might post something saying coming soon. Yes, you're actually going to have it in the multi-list in an hour and a half. Just keep in mind, now in the United States, you must have every listing in the multi-list within one day. If you don't, it's a fine because they consider that discrimination. The National Association of Realtors has decided that if you're holding it off the market, you might be doing that in order to keep one person or another from seeing that property and therefore you're discriminating. So it must be in the multi-list within one day. But you can still post coming soon with a picture of the house. Then the next day you can post just listed. And then if you're doing an open house, and by the way, open houses are legal. You're just uh, limited to allowing one person in uh, at a time or one group in at a time, uh, depending on where you are in the country in this case. You post an open house ad. And we can even have a little bit of fun with open house ads and, and tie it to a, a contest or something that'll get uh, other people sharing it. And we'll come back around to that. Or maybe I'll explain that now. One of the things we do is try and engage those people that you're communicating with and it's amazing how uh, much you can engage them for very little money. So we were buying $10 Starbucks gift cards. Seriously, $10 Starbucks gift cards. And I know for some of you uh, that are just starting out, that's a lot of money. But the reality is you can uh, build a lot of brand recognition very quickly on 10 bucks. So one of the things we ran was uh, for the upcoming open house, I'm trying to get as many people here as possible. So if you share this open house, which by the way, links back to your listing on your webpage. If you share this open house, I'm gonna give away a $10 gift card. I'm gonna tally up all the people who have shared it and we're gonna randomly select one and send you a $10 gift card to Starbucks. And you'd be surprised how many people actually share it. The last one we did had about 35 shares. And again, they're sharing your listing. So more people in their sphere of influence, their social network, are seeing your, uh, uh, your sale as well. Then when it goes under contract, you can post something about that. When you sell it, when it just sells, you can post something about that. You can even take a picture of yourself in the conference room with uh, the clients on closing day and post that. And then once you get a review, now in our case, Central 21 uh, um, subscribes to subscribes to Real Satisfied. Real Satisfied hounds the people to find out what they thought of you. And if they thought you were great and write something very nice, then you're going to take that and screenshot it and you're going to share that as well. Uh, one of the things Wassel does regularly is post those uh, wonderful reviews. Kathy Novak does the same thing. These are all opportunities on the same listing to showcase that you're in real estate because honestly what you're doing is reminding them that you're in the real estate industry. You can also create what we call calls to action. So we have, and if you don't, if you're not aware of this, I can send it to you again. Those of you who are brand new, I will send them to you probably later today. But we have branded home buyer kits, they're PDFs. We have branded home seller kits that are PDFs that you can just send to a client. So it, rather than posting those online, you want people to reach out and, and communicate with you because those people are asking for a free home buyer kit are likely thinking about buying and that opens a dialogue with them. People who want a, a home seller kit are considering selling. So from time to time, and I'm thinking monthly, you post something saying, by the way, we've got our new 2020 home sellers kit, how to sell a home for the most money in 2020. If you'd like a free copy, IM me, instant message me, or call me at this number, or email me at this email address. And that gets them reaching out to you. You're giving them a call to action, some reason to connect with you. The other thing you can do, and this is an old technique, but still works. We used to do this in newspapers. You can post an ad that's somewhat vague, 
to get them to at least come to your site. Because keep in mind, one of the things that we're doing is we're actually paying Google and Facebook a lot of money to track those people that come to your site and try and push ads to them in the future. We want them to come back over and over and over again. So we might run an ad, we might even include a picture, but the ad might say, check out our exclusive home that just hit the market. Spectacular four bedroom, two and a half bath home in a great location. For photos, price, and monthly mortgage payment, click the link and schedule your private showing today. Now this doesn't have anything about the house. It just says it's a great property, but it's enough to whet somebody's appetite that they'll click on it. Um, I can't think of his name, but the gentleman who used to, Craig Proctor, used to be the top agent with Remax in the world. Craig does this as a program all over the all over the world, where he talks about generic advertising. The property when you uh, the problem when you advertise a three bedroom, two bath ranch in the Parkland School District and post that online is somebody may look at that and say, "Wow, that's really cool," but I'm not looking for a three bedroom, two bath ranch in Parkland. I'm looking for a four bedroom, three and a half bath colonial in Nazareth. So if you limit the information that you provide them more often than not, someone will click on this. And by the way, if you're using the Zap uh, search engine, the Zap sites that we've created, those sites, those that search is comp more comprehensive than uh, Zillow is. Let me give you an example of that real quick so you can see it. So for example, I'm in Bill Regal's uh, site right now. Let's say I want to search the Nazareth School District between 200 and 650,000, there's 45 listings. I can click filter, and this is something Zillow's lacking. And one of the reasons we try and uh, utilize this to, to really get clients looking at our sites rather than anything else. We have a lot of options that a client can pick to really choose the right property. They can do a search by map and draw on the map where they wanna be. They can look for just houses that have central air. They can look for just colonials or contemporaries or ranches or Cape Cods. They can uh, put in a square footage range. They can put in a lot size range. And by the way, these sites update directly from the MLS constantly. And because of that, they're up to date. We can look for just for closures. We can look at pending sales if we want to. We can look at the year built or, or the lot size. All those will actually make it uh, easier for a buyer to find a property. And because of that, we're more likely to have people using these sites. Now, one of the things I've been doing lately is anytime a buyer comes in, we've been trying this with three or four agents in the office. I was paying one of the admins. <clears throat> I'm not going to do this for everybody because it gets outrageously expensive. I was paying one of the admins for two weeks to take those three agents and every lead that came in from lead router or any other source to create an automated search here, to actually create a search for them, uh, for their clients and push it to them because you can do that in Zap. And we'll go through that in another workshop. But we start pushing these things to Zap and you'd be surprised every day you get an email that says six people logged onto your website today, eight people logged onto your website today. They keep coming back because listings are going to them automatically. And as listings go to them, they uh, naturally come back to that site and they search in that site. It's a very, very powerful tool if we can get people to use it. But again, what we're trying to do here is have a generic uh, marketing piece that's going to hopefully bring them back to um, your site or have them log onto your site. We've had a lot of fun with uh, under the radar ads as well. You can have, uh, you can post almost anything. Now, again, I'm not saying post constant real estate because you want to connect with your sphere of influence, your social network as well on a different level, but intersperse them with these. So for example, we might say, um, I was at a house today, uh, I was listing a property today and the owner hadn't done any updates in 20 years. So I'm in the process of finding the best home stager to help us to get the highest price for this property by staging the house. Little things like that, remind them that you're in real estate and also might get them interacting because you might get some people putting in, I heard so-and-so is great or I'm wonderful at picking uh, colors or whatever. You'll get a lot of interesting feedback. We've posted, uh, I have a buyer from out of, uh, a relocation buyer coming in from California today um, and I'm showing them five houses, wish me luck. You also want to try and show them evidence of success. You want to show them what you do. So I have an investor coming to town 
looking for um, investment properties in the area wish me luck. That shows them that you're also doing investment properties. Uh, I have a property flipper coming in, somebody who's planning on buying properties and turning them over. Uh, wish me luck. Stuff like that is going to remind them you're in real estate, but also give them the idea that you do more than just showing a house to uh, friends and relatives. Some of the other things you can share are news articles. Now, we are trying to post a lot of news articles on our sites. Um, if you go to the, our main page and then go to your page, now I'm still logged in here as Bill Regal, down here, you're going to see our blog. And if you click on more articles, we've been trying to add them. This takes a quite a bit of time. And by the way, you can actually post these on LinkedIn. You can post them on Facebook. You can post them on Instagram. You can post them anywhere. So some of the articles we've put in recently, home buyer, is far, home buyer demand is uh, far above last year's pace. Uh, buy this home and end up in jail. Let me open that for a minute because that's a fun one to share. The cost of renting versus buying a home. Will the presidential election impact real estate? Three ways to win a bidding war. Ten things that old home buyers think. And the health crisis driving buyers out of the city. Is that happening? These are all different kinds of articles that you can share that might bring people back to your site with your agent information at the top. <clears throat> this particular article we got from uh, Real Estate's Lighter Side. We pay for a subscription to that so we can repost. And again, you can see that we can add this to uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and so on. We can even send it as an email. And this particular house at one point in time was uh, a... Uh, uh, the Howard County Sheriff's Office, and still has a jail cell downstairs. And it talks about how nice the property is, but it also shows the lower level where this jail cell is. Actually, there might be more than one jail cell now that I'm looking at it. But again, the idea is to try and make sure that you're sharing stuff that might interest people, but also remind them that you're in the real estate industry and that you need their help. Some of the other things we've had fun with and by the way, you can always steal these off my page or, or our uh, company page. This was a little contest we did where there are seven differences between these two photos. Try and find the differences, and, uh, the, and we'll, who, out of all the correct answers, we will send out a $10 uh, gift card to the person who gets it right. And a number of people had a lot of fun trying to find the differences between these two photos because on the surface, they look exactly the same, but you can see the two birds over here and there's three birds over here and uh, so on. You can actually find the seven differences and have fun with it. We've also been posting lately some things to get people uh, interacting. This is, uh, we're doing a real estate fact uh, campaign right now. Always check your property survey before building. In 1816, the United States began building a fort at Lake Champlain to prevent British attacks coming down from Canada. And after a joint survey done by the US and Great Britain, it was found that the fort was actually on the Canadian side of the border. So that is what became known as Fort Blunder. Something to share that, uh, again, reminds me you're in real estate, but something to, that's fun to follow. We're having a lot of fun, uh, sadly, with 2020, 2020's interior paint color of the year. And by the way, if you own your home instead of renting, you can paint it whatever color you want. Um, and the three hardest things for me to say, sorry, I didn't get the house. The appraisal came in low and Worcester sauce. Now, I, some of you uh, want to do everything as, um, as professional as possible, and that's great. I tend to try and add a little humor to anything that I do. The idea being that I want people to follow, and that's part of the challenge of trying to get people to remember you and, and stay in front of you. Some of the other things that track very, very well are always video. Uh, if you're at an open house and Facebook pushes these to the top, Instagram pushes these to the top, uh, you can even post the videos on LinkedIn if you want to. But just take your cell phone. And by the way, I'll segue for a second because I've got to say this every chance I get. There are too many agents when you're taking photos for listings that hold the phone upright. Let me turn my camera back on here for a second so you can see me if you want to. You probably don't want to. But too many agents take photos holding the camera like this. Don't do that. Hold the camera sideways when you're taking photos of a property. Why? Because you're taking three pictures for the kitchen. 
because you're never going to get the entire room in when it's actually vertical. So make sure you're taking them uh, horizontally when you're taking photos. Now for video, it doesn't matter. So as you're starting your open house, again, this is one of the things you can do on every listing. Uh, hey, I'm here at an open house on uh, 123 Main Street, Nazareth. Uh, hope you can join us. Um, this is a beautiful property and spend about 20 or 30 seconds walking through and showing parts of the house. Is that really going to get anybody to show up there and uh, walk through the open house? Probably not. All it's really doing is reminding people that you're in the real estate business. That's all it's doing. How about a video at the end of, this, of settlement? Hey, I'm here at settlement. We just settled on this great house. There are several agents in the office that do this now. We just ended uh, settlement. This is the great family that's moving into this wonderful property in Mount Pocono. Um, they're really enjoying, uh, they're, they're really going to enjoy their new home, so on and so forth. Thanks so much. They wave at you. And again, it's something to remind people that you're in real estate. If you have a home stager come out and stage a property, you can take a video of the home stage you're staging. When you have a videographer or photographer, some of you have professional photographers shoot every house. While they're shooting the house, take a quick video of them. Hey, I'm over at such and such house. Hey, I hire professional photographers when I do uh, listings. And this is my professional photographer, uh, Joan or whatever the name is, and uh, say hi. Uh, she's getting ready to photograph the house. We'll do some great images and I'll post them later on. And that sort of thing absolutely works to keep you at the top of the page. Uh, it'll rank you higher on Facebook. It's something that people are gonna see. Now you can take it a step further. So for example, in our Bethlehem office, by the way, you don't have to do this with a green screen. You can do this anywhere. Uh, we've got a few agents who do podcasts. And for example, uh, Khalif Robinson and Sarah Klinker do something they called Cars to Castles. They do a buyer seminar. They've also done first-time investor seminars. And they've done this from the Bethlehem office in the green screen. And they're chatting in front of the green screen and talking about how to buy a property. But you can do the same thing I'm doing right now, which is work from a computer and put up some PowerPoints. And if you need a PowerPoint for first-time home buyers, I will get you one. If you want a PowerPoint for first-time investors, I will absolutely get you one. Uh, and then you can stream it live to Facebook. You can put it on Zoom so people can log in. And as you're doing that, you're actually connecting with a much larger audience. As you stream to Facebook, that uh, Facebook stream actually ranks you much higher. It pushes your stuff to the top. And then those people that are on Facebook are going to see more of your material because of the videos you're posting. It's all a ranking system. So this works very, very well. The other thing is it stays on there. So somebody can come back and watch your buyer seminar again later. You might want to do a buyer seminar in Spanish. You might want to do an investor seminar in Spanish. You might want to do an, an advanced workshop on 1031 exchanges or something else that might attract uh, uh, recognition. And again, you can sit in your, uh, in your home office. You can sit in the conference room at any of the offices, and you can simply run this from a laptop and do a quick seminar. You don't even have to do a long one. You can talk about how to build, uh, how to um, uh, do, buy a, a house for the first time. And maybe what you want to do is sit down with your laptop and bring in the mortgage officer you like the best and sit the mortgage officer next to you with a laptop and start your first time home buyer seminar or just start a conversation. So why is it now a great time? Let's use Jason Bryan from Mortgage America as an example. Hey, Jason, why is it so important right now if you're going to be buying a house to buy it when the interest rates are so low? And let him answer that question and have a conversation. People are going to watch it live and people are going to play it back later. And it's going to rank you much higher on social media. And you can post this to Facebook. You can post it to Instagram. The, the key is to post consistently. It's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 personal content and 20% real estate specific. And some of that personal content can have real estate related. Hey, I was showing a house today and got a flat tire. That's really personal. It's not actually uh, uh, real estate specific. Now, some people go a little overboard. But make sure that you're communicating with them and connecting with them. You don't want to just be badgering them with a sales pitch but you wanna be carefully reminding them that you're in the business and hopefully add some humor. Top agents around the country are posting multiple times a day. And for those of you who uh, have been in the business a long time, I've said this many, many times, but agents 15 years ago that were the top agents in the country, we interviewed a lot of them. 
And one of the interesting things that I found was that in the top 40 agents, I think 36 or 37 of them, were sitting down every morning and writing 10 to 15 personal notes, handwritten just a notes, and mailing them to people every day. And taking that 20 minutes while they're having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea resonated and really connected with people. By the way, that still works, that personal touch. Send a thank you note to your, uh, your server from lunch yesterday. Send a personal note to somebody you just did a deal with. Send a personal note to your uh, aunt who was sick recently. Whatever you want to do. But if you have the time to do that, and keep in mind, everybody says, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. The reason I'm pointing this out is when we were looking at the top 40 agents in the entire country, and 36 or 37 of them were taking 20 or 30 minutes every single day and writing personal handwritten notes, if they've got the time to do it, you can find the time to do it. And I'm saying that because it's the same thing with social media. Now, I, I've posted some things at traffic lights. You know, something that pops into my head, I'll try and post something quick to try and keep people engaged, try and get people coming back. And I've found that when I post something that's funny, uh, some people will go back and like stuff that I did a month and a half ago because they'll scroll down my page and look until they see other stuff that they find humorous. But it's connecting with those people. So if you can sit down in the morning each morning and write one or two things or post one or two things or share a listing from, uh, your zap site it's keeping you you in front of them and then maybe after dinner or right before bed post something else that is something that tries to keep you involved with everybody around you now one of the other things you can do is try and connect with those people that are in the uh that are on your facebook page and everywhere else and one of the ways to do that is hashtags because there are people who follow hashtags and search hashtags, and you can put them into Twitter, you can put them into Facebook, you can put them into um, uh, Instagram. And one of the things that I got this from Chris Stager, who is a guru at social media, he actually puts 30 hashtags on every photo that he uh, posts online or every post that he puts online, which sounds incredibly crazy to me, but it really works. And he has a crazy number of followers, and he's getting a lot of business, and this is one of the things that he attributes it to. So he does global posting, and when you talk about global uh, hashtags, hashtag entrepreneur, if you're trying to go after commercial real estate, hashtag no days off, hashtag hustle. These are actually four very popular hashtags. Now, the downside to hashtags like this, apparently, there are 300,000 to a million posts using these types of global hashtags uh, every, I forget if he said every day or every week. So when you post something and you hashtag one of these, it only lasts in the feed for a very short period of time. But the more times you show up in it, the higher you rank. Because again, you want your Facebook page, your Instagram page to rise to the top and you want more people to be able to see it. So adding these types of hashtags helps your, uh, your ranking. Then you want to do moderately popular niches. So maybe you do hashtag realtor or hashtag million dollar listing. Apparently a lot of people follow hashtag million dollar listing. Hashtag century 21. Those are all niches. And then you might want to hashtag something that is very specific. Let's say you're at an Iron Pigs game or you're at Music Fest, you can hashtag Music Fest, hashtag Iron Pigs. And what happens there is that people will actually search those hashtags at certain times of year, and they're going to see your posts show up, even if they're not connected with you at all. That's the idea behind the hashtags. They will find you even if you're not connected to them. And again, the more people who do that, the higher you rank, the more people you get as followers, the more likely you are to pick up more business. If you're Spanish speaking, you might want to hashtag something that works in, in that uh, arena as well. Or you might try and hashtag something like Bethlehem or Low Hill Township or Nazareth uh, School District. Anything that someone might find. Uh, Northwestern School District, I've been hashtagging a few things. And it's interesting, people who follow the sports in uh, Northwestern find my ads because they follow the hashtags for Northwestern Lehigh because they're looking for the sports. And in the sports are interspersed some of my ads because I'm hashtagging some of my listings that way. And when I'm looking at that, 
One of the things that Chris also suggested, and this actually came from someone else, a, a national um, trainer. They call it the dollar eighty strategy. Now, this might take a little bit of time, but if you search hashtags, if you search the top Instagram posts or the top Facebook posts for different hashtags, and then put your two cents in on them, you actually start ranking better as well because you're communicating with those top trending posts. So for example, let me see if I can pull up Facebook here for a second, hopefully. If I'm on Facebook and I wanna look for hashtag, well, what's one of these uh, popular ones? Uh, hashtag one life. I don't even know what that means. Hashtag one life and see what comes up. You're going to see a lot of stuff actually populating. If you pick these and you actually start commenting on them, this has got 172 comments. You add your comments as well. You start ranking higher. And by the way, people looking at these wonder who you are and they start coming back. We might do Hang on, we might search hashtag century 21. And uh, incidentally, the top agent in Orlando, Florida um, has some brilliant stuff online. Uh, she's handling a lot of uh, Disney properties. She's doing commercial and residential. Um, I think she said she had 10 million pending last month. And she is constantly hashtagging everything. And if you put in almost any hashtag, you end up finding her showing up. Here's one, Char Cesario. She happens to be the, uh, the person in charge for Century 21 of all the offices in Pennsylvania. And she's posting congratulations to our newest affiliate, Century 21 Home Advisors. Fairly large company in Lancaster um, yesterday became a Century 21. And she posted a video of them that has that hashtag. Uh, Amy Bloom, uh, this is actually Chris Stager, um, posted some stuff. But again, you can, uh, and here, by the way, is one of those wonderful, uh, real satisfied uh, reports. Uh, and this is something that you can post on, congratulations. And that's gonna help my ranking. It's also going to um, have people seeing this. And by the way, they're more likely to connect with me then and start following me as well. They only have a few things here, your realtor, Delane Realtor, Home Goals, and Central 21. Um, Stephanie Bader and two others looking for uh, Century 21 We Saw Crossing. Maybe I'll just like that one. Uh, love it, making dreams come true. Like that one. Oh, by the way, the agent I was talking about with the, in Orlando, uh, Florida is Christine right there. And she's showing up on that particular uh, post. But again, and here's uh, Century 21 in, in uh, France. A lot of things you can do with this to try and rank yourself higher and have people find you, but hashtags is one way to do it. The dollar eighty strategy, look for hashtags where you want to comment. So for example, if you want to really nail the, the Nazareth area school district, start looking at hashtags every day, hashtag Nazareth, hashtag Nazareth area school district, hashtag Nazareth school district, hashtag Nazareth homes for sale. And as listings come up or as uh, uh, posts come up, comment on those posts. And by the way, those people who may not even know you are going to see your comments and they're going to hopefully come back and look at who you are. And then if they are thinking about buying or selling real estate, it is something that you're going to uh, become known as the person in that area. You can also do something called geotagging. So wherever you happen to have, uh, wherever you are, you can geotag that location. So for example, if you've got a listing, let's come back to this for a minute. I don't think I've posted a listing in a little while and probably should have, but let's say, and I have a lot of fun with stuff that we post, but let's say that I uh, want to, I've got a property that I wanna post. Let's say this particular house happens to be in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I might edit that post and I might tag it. Oh, there's the tag. I might tag it for Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Now, why is that important? I'm not gonna, I can, I'm, I will tag it actually. Why is it important to tag it as Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Because there are people who will click on Bethlehem, Pennsylvania and search and find your posts, especially if they're coming from outside the area. We've got relocating clients who are moving from Texas to Bethlehem and they wanna see what Bethlehem's all about. So they look it up on Facebook or Instagram. 
they start searching. And in the list of things that come up are you. So anything you can post, if you can geotag it, you might want to tag Iron Pigs, Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Now, when someone is looking up Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, this particular ad is going to show up in that newsfeed. So again, things that you're going to be able to do to try and uh, keep in front of them. Geotagging. We can also do contests and giveaways. Now, this is one we did last year. Some of you might remember this. I'm going to have another one coming up this month for uh, Halloween. We actually did one on, on the best pumpkin carving. We gave away a $10 gift card. We gave away a $10 gift card on this one. Uh, take a picture of Baby Yoda and make it into a real estate ad. We had about 15 or 16 entries. We had more than 100 followers for this contest for 10 bucks. And by the way, some of our uh, clients and followers came up with some pretty good ads. A uh, picture of Baby Yoda when the seller declines your offer. That moment when you get the keys to your new home. There's lots of great ads that they created that uh, clients out in the public and people that I didn't even know came up with ads uh, for our agency. And we ended up giving away a $10 gift card. I think we gave away two because there were two people that did just a great job. And then we've set a cutoff date. People can submit them and you set a cutoff date for it. There's, uh, again, I said about open houses. Uh, one of the things that some successful agents are doing is holding an open house, even if nobody shows up, and post it online and ask uh, everyone that's connected to you to share it. And at the end, uh, by Friday at 11.59 p.m., we're going to give a $10 gift card randomly to one of the people who shared this ad because we need to get people to the open house. And uh, everybody who's connected with you starts sharing this ad for this property. And they're involved in helping you to be successful. And by the way, when they get involved in helping you, they're far more likely to recommend you and refer you and remember that you're in the real estate industry. And then one thing that is very, very powerful, um, but most people won't ever get around to doing it, is what we call co-branding. This is something that a few agents in the Lehigh Valley are doing now. Chris happens to be one of them. Um, he actually will take uh, 60 or 90 seconds. I think it's on Tuesdays. And he goes to a different business. And he'll walk in and he'll talk to the owner. He'll tell the owner he's doing this ahead of time. He'll show the outside of the building. He'll show himself, hey, I want to introduce you to the best pizza place in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. And walks into the place and says, and here's the owner, Tony. Hey, Tony, how are you doing? This is the best pizza place in the area, love the place. Um, what, what are you making there? Oh, great. Do you do uh, calzones? Really? Okay, fantastic. And uh, so if you need a pizza for Friday night, uh, stop by here. 90 seconds, post one each week. By the way, that owner of that business is going to share your ad, your co-branded ad on their Facebook page, on their Instagram, everything that they do. And all of their clients and friends and relatives are going to see your ad and see that you're connected with that person and hopefully come to you because you now become a liked and trusted advisor uh, because you're working with Tony. And they did it, and uh, Chris did it for a salon and he did it for uh, a lot of different places. He can do a lot of restaurants. And a lot of people are now referring him business because he's doing something for them. And by the way, because it's a video, it ranks him higher on Facebook and Instagram. So again, he's actually got something going on that is bringing in more and more business. A lot of things that you can do. Now, I will add one more thing that I'll mention. You can absolutely, uh, if I can figure out how to do this on the new version of Facebook, I don't know if you've run into this problem, but uh, Facebook has changed dramatically. I'm going to go over to Central 21 Kimes page for a second. It doesn't look the same, and it's driving me nuts trying to figure this out. But if you happen to have, oh, by the way, here's another one. So we ran an ad on how much is your business worth? And we did a webinar on this a few weeks ago. Well, I guess it was on August 26th, so about a month ago. And we had 138 people who reached, 27 people who commented on it. So we had a lot of activity just on that little webinar we did. Uh, we posted some videos. This particular video I, I boosted. Now, it cost me $50, I think, but I posted, you can do this with an ad. You don't have to have a video. You can do it with a picture of a property. And then if you do it with a picture of a property, you can even put a link up here in uh, where you want them to link back to to find the listing. 
And by the way, that link ought to be your particular property on your particular page, so it comes back to you. But you put some information in on it, you put a picture, in this case I put a video, and then you can, if you put it on your business page, if you create a business page not on your personal, you can click on Boost. And if I click on Boost and pay 50 bucks, it's going to try and push it into news feeds of those people that you're targeting. In this case, it went out to 11,509 people that showed up in their page. 1,505 people actually watched the video, actually clicked on it and watched the video. That's from 50 bucks. Now, uh, I haven't sold the building, but did it connect with a lot of people? And by the way, I've gotten people who've called me and said, I called you because I see your stuff all the time. And that's because I'm clicking boost. So uh, just yesterday, 172 people watched the whole video. That's yesterday. Now, that was $10 a day that we did. Now, if I'm boosting a post, though, if it's a house, it gets tricky because you have to change it to special ad category because houses, you can't discriminate. Uh, commercial real estate, technically, you can discriminate somewhat, as terrible as that sounds. You don't have to, I should say, I'm not saying discriminate. You don't have to um, hit a large radius. You can target a small radius. One of the beauties of Facebook used to be, and we can't do it anymore, that if you had a house in Nazareth, you could boost that post and send it only to Nazareth. Now, the idea was that I'm not really looking for a buyer there. I'm reminding everybody in Nazareth that I'm the person to call. So I want everybody in Nazareth to see my ad as much as possible. So I'll pay a lot of money so that everybody in Nazareth sees it constantly. Because of discrimination, they felt that that type of ad was um, discriminating against somebody's ability in Philadelphia from buying that house in Nazareth. That's not exactly the intent, but that's the idea. So now if you boost a post and it's a house, you have to hit a minimum of a 25 mile radius. So you have, happen to be in Nazareth, you're hitting Mount Pocono, New Jersey, uh, Coopersburg, it's a pretty wide radius. So it, it's not quite as effective for a small location anymore. With a commercial property, I don't have to do quite that, but you can target where you wanna hit. So in this uh, instance, I hit Allentown, Pennsylvania. All I did was put in a 25 mile radius of Allentown, Pennsylvania, men and women, anybody from 18 to 65, that's it. And it does allow me to target specific groups if it's commercial, not for residential anymore. So in residential, if I had a million dollar property, I used to be able to target people with a net worth of at least $2 million. I used to be able to target people who, um, you know, were executives or whatever, so that we were targeting the right audience for that type of property because that's who could afford it. Can't do that anymore. But on a commercial, I can put in uh, only targeting restaurant owners, restaurant supervisors, small business owners, restaurant managers, journalists. It's an interesting one. And small business owners. I could just target that group, but it's going to uh, really limit who I'm sending it out to. But it would be the right audience for this type of property. So this allows me to specifically target who I'm looking for. Again, I'm only spending 10 bucks a day on this particular ad, and it tells me I'm gonna reach somewhere between 283 and 817 people. I have found it usually exceeds that, at least with the stuff I've been doing. So again, with this particular ad, we have hit in five days over 11,000 people, and 1,500 have sat and watched the video. So very powerful types of ads. And again, you can do this for uh, individual pictures of properties as well. And again, here we're adding some um, uh, articles, video. I don't know if I have any still photos here at the moment because I've been doing most stuff with video at the moment. But very powerful type of ad. Now this one we targeted just Mount Pocono. Uh, and for whatever reason, it didn't work quite as well. Ah, it was rejected. So often, way too often, they reject ads claiming it's discriminatory. I don't know how this ad was discriminatory. Nestled among the tall trees with a seasonal view of the lake and desirable Hollywood acres. I don't see it, but unfortunately that does happen from time to time. And we have to keep tweaking the ad to try and make sure that it, uh, it fits their guidelines. They don't give you a lot of uh, ideas of how to fit those guidelines. 
So that's my, my quick version of an introduce, uh, introduction to social media tools and marketing. What questions does anybody have? Anything that you can think of that might be a question that you might want to ask? Lauren, I'm sorry. Uh, my mom's caregiver was on the phone, so I missed the first 15 minutes. Are you recording this by any chance? We are, yeah. I'll post Thank this so uh, later on today. Yep. I appreciate it. Anybody have any questions at all about social media, about marketing? Oh, well, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, we are going to be putting out uh, for our agents uh, later on uh, tomorrow, we're going to have some autumn and fall ads that will be coming out to everybody. For those of you who do not have a photo for us, I need a photo of you, uh, hopefully a good one, uh, so that we can build some ad campaigns. And then again, I would post as much stuff as you can just to remind people that you're in the industry. You're going to get people connecting with you that you haven't seen in a long time. I'm always surprised at how many people come back to us that I haven't seen in a long, long time because they see our materials. Carol Colangelo in our Allentown office, this is two or three years ago, but it was interesting. She got two calls the same week from uh, friends who lived in the Philadelphia area because she had relocated from Philadelphia to the Leah Valley market. And uh, one of them had said, you know, I'm looking to buy a house for about $400,000. It's a shame you're no longer in the King of Prussia, Philadelphia market because I'd love to use you. And of course, Carol wrote right back to her and said, not a problem. I'm on my way. And sold both of them properties based just on social media posts. And one of them she hadn't seen in a decade. But they still liked and trusted her, so they still came back to her. And again, all this has to do with trying to connect with those people who like and trust you. And the hashtag idea is trying to help you to uh, connect with people that maybe don't know you, but start building a relationship with them because they see you online, they start trusting you, and you're the person they come to. Rather than somebody being sold on social media, on, uh, on Zillow, uh, a lead, you're actually getting some sort of contact connection. And it can be done very ex inexpensively or, or just about free. Any other questions at all? I do actually, Lauren. Um, I have a video that I wanted to um, promote that was made for me from my guy that I used for mortgages. Um, sure. Really nice, you know, five top places to go to when you're visiting the Poconos with an ad of me and an ad of him. No matter how many times I try to pay to promote this, I consistently get denied. I don't know what I'm doing and it's driving me nuts. Okay, so when you're posting a video like that, uh, one of the things you're going to have to do is, and that is a problem sometimes, uh, and I've had the same issue, by the way, um, you're going to have to, when you're, built, when you're uh, running that ad, when you're creating it, you've got to actually click on special ad category, and then that special ad category is going to be housing. Even though you're really looking at an area, you've got to change it to housing, and then the area you hit has to be 25-mile radius. Uh, right. You also have to make sure that the wording doesn't have anything that they consider discriminatory. I don't know how they do that. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing. I don't put anything housing. I just put out, a, there's there's nothing. I don't do anything to it. I don't care who sees it. I don't care whatever. I mean, I'm not doing anything. I don't know if it's the size of the file. I don't know if it's the quality of the file. The quality is no, great. It's, it's generally not that. It's generally something in the ad. So, for example, this one that was denied. And, again, I'm guessing because they don't print a lot of great information on it. I have North Bethlehem Landmark here. That might have been discriminatory because uh, the algorithm may say that I'm discriminating against people outside Bethlehem. I have Liberty High School and Moravian College. Again, that might be something they consider discriminatory somehow. I know it's not, but it might be something that's flagged. You can ask for a review. Sometimes it still comes back the same way. So we keep tweaking it to make it work. Um, I'll try and work with you on it and see if I can help you to get it posted. I would greatly Those appreciate are it. Thank you. Incidentally, yeah. um, one of the other things you can do if you have a video like that, make sure you post it on YouTube because people do Google search. And remember, Google owns YouTube. And if they uh, um, ask, ask for any information on the Poconos, if your video shows up and you start getting traction that way, again, it's another ad source. So I would definitely put that onto uh, uh, YouTube as well. Yeah, and, and the video, I mean, it shows like five top places, Kalahari, Blue Ridge Winery, um, you know, the Bushkill Falls. I mean, I have those hashtags for those items, and then it kicks the Matt and I. But no matter what I do, and people are going to those places, and those hashtags are coming up for those places, they're getting promoted, but we're getting kicked in the pants. 
Right. <laughs> does that make so, sense? It does. So um, if you send me a copy of it, I'm going to try and play with it on our site. And then okay. um, I'll see what we can do about making sure it gets posted. Okay. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Any other questions at all? Fantastic. Then I will uh, see you all at some point in the not too distant future. Thanks. Thank you very much.